the cleaners you're using in your house could be harming your dogs and cats. Hey guys, I'm Jessica, the furry family coach, and in this video, we're gonna be making a pet safe, non-toxic, all-purpose, homemade cleaner so that you can stop using the store-bought chemicals that could be harming your pets. A July 2019 article came out in the journal The Science of the Total Environment titled Urinary Concentrations and Distribution Profiles of 21 Phthalate Metabolites in Pet Cats and Dogs. What does that mean? Well, first, what are phthalate? I've got to have my cheat sheet because this is all like science terms. <laughs> so phthalates, which is P-H-A-L, no. P-H-T-H-A-L-A-T-E-S, phthalates, uh, they're phthalic acid used to increase the flexibility of plastics, also the durability and longevity. Now we know that phthalates are shown to damage the liver, the kidney, the lungs, and the reproductive system. They can be absorbed through skin or they can be inhaled. So think about this. You clean your counter surface or your floor and what happens? Your dog or your cat comes and walks on the floor. Maybe they lay or sit on the floor. So their paw pads are absorbing all of these toxic phthalates that are in the household cleaner that you just used, trying to clean up to make the house clean for your pets and yourself. You're actually introducing these really toxic chemicals inadvertently you don't know they're there but you're doing the research to figure out that they're there and figuring out what you can do to make it better right so we're going to make a pet safe non-toxic homemade all-purpose cleaner in this video they're found in many household cleaners perfumes hair gels nail polish um, air freshener pesticides um, and the list just keeps going on and on. So when you're trying to figure out on the label if whatever you're using contains phthalates, how do you do that? So first of all, I will put um, in the description below a list of the eight most commonly used phthalates because I really can't pronounce them all. So I don't even wanna butcher this video by trying. But one thing that you really need to know is that Companies are legally allowed to not list the phthalates and just list fragrances on the bottle. And that fragrances um, ingredient can constitute any sort of phthalates, any or all that, that exist, we don't know. They're all lumped under the word of the ingredient, fragrances. Personally, anything that just lists fragrances on it, I completely stay away from because it's like reading a food label that says natural flavors. Who knows what that is? It's just there so that they are allowed to hide things they don't want to tell you. So if a food label says natural flavors, if a cleaner or some product you're using says fragrance, just hands down 100% of the time, I can't think of an exception. If you can think of an exception, let me know in the comments but I just wouldn't use it personally. So back to the study. Now that we know what phthalates are, back to the study. The study shows, okay, so they measured, I wanna get this right, so I've got my cheat sheet. They measured 21 common phthalates in the urine of pet dogs and pet cats in New York State, which I think is a pretty good, New York State is probably a pretty good um, sample of the pet dogs and cats throughout the United States and probably other um, first world countries, right? So that's probably a really good um, example of what's going on throughout the country. Um, phthalates were detected in 100% of samples and 12 of the 21 phthalates were showing detection in frequencies greater than 80% of what should have been there. Um, that's amazing. Also, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has safe level standards for humans, and in all of the pets that were tested, they had two times the human safe levels of phthalates in their systems. So obviously, 
whatever we're using in our homes, you know, we have some protection. We have clothes on, we wash regularly, we take showers every day. We're getting all of these toxins off of our body. Our dogs and cats don't have that luxury. In fact, our dogs and cats, especially our cats, are grooming themselves significant quantities in significant quantities that um, so they are ingesting all of these toxins at an even greater rate than we are and they are so much smaller than us they really can't afford it so we know like I just told you earlier these phthalates are causing they they are known to cause kidney damage liver damage lung damage and reproductive system damage all of these are huge concerns so what can you do you can start by changing out these chemicals that you're using to clean in your home with pet safe non-toxic cleaners that we can make ourselves so in this video i'm going to show you how we're going to make one type of pet safe non-toxic all-purpose cleaner um, i actually have another video on my channel uh, with another pet safe non-toxic all-purpose cleaner um, which is a totally different recipe from this one i will put the link in the description below so when you're done with this video you can check out that video okay i do want to thank karen becker and her bestie for um, providing the recipe to this particular offer to this particular all-purpose cleaner so that i can share it with everyone watching this video thank you so much for being here um by the way what are you using to clean in your home before we get into um all of this what are you using to clean your home were you aware of the toxin load in the chemicals that you may be using to clean your home and the effect they have on their pets let me know in the comments below i really want to know um, if you were aware of this previously if this is just something new you're finding out about if maybe you were aware of the toxin load for you and your family so that's why you're looking for all natural solutions um, and now maybe you, you didn't even realize that they were affecting your dogs and cats as well and with this video you now know that they are let me know that in the comments what, wherever you're at if you didn't know if you did know what did you know post it in the comments below I'd love to hear um, where you're at what you know what you now know, <laughs> um, maybe that you didn't know before, go ahead and post in the comments. I would love to know about that. Uh, so let's get right into this recipe. So we're gonna start out, I've got six ounces of just distilled water. Um, I, you know, we have a, a service that brings us water every month and I, that's what I use for pretty much everything. Um, so that's what I'm using in this recipe, six ounces. Um, and you can, of course, multiply this out if you want to make larger batches, just so you're aware and you don't have to Google it. There are eight ounces in a cup, so six ounces is three quarters of a cup. And then I'm going to measure out six ounces of white vinegar, which again is just three quarters of a cup. Mix that together. Now I'm going to add five drops of grapefruit seed extract. Grapefruit seed extract, I will put a link to this particular one that I'm using. This tiny bottle could potentially last you an extremely long time and it is really inexpensive even as it is. Um, I'll put a link in the description below to where I got this one. I'm just going to add five drops of grapefruit seed extract. This is where we get our disinfectant from. And as you can see, we don't even need to use that much. This bottle is gonna last me a really long time. Now, ooh, my little sign fell. I don't know if you're checking out my little decorations. I cleared my counter, <laughs> um, but I wanted to leave just a little bit for you guys to see because I really love decorating. So anyway, um, I've got my little tiered tray and some little fall and Halloween decorations. I hope you like it. If you do post in the comments below, I would love to know what you think of it. Um, so now I'm just going to take this mixture and I'm going to put it in a spray bottle. But before I do that, I'm going to add some citrus peel. Now I tried to peel this lemon um, so that it was like really super pretty and I totally failed. So I sincerely apologize this isn't that pretty but I'm just going to take some citrus peel and put it in my spray bottle and you can use any kind of citrus 
Um, I prefer lemon just because I absolutely love the smell of lemon. You can use lime, you can use orange, whatever you prefer. Um, and I actually might make a little bit more of this to fill my spray bottle, but for the purpose of this recipe, I just wanted to go exactly by the recipe um, that Dr. Becker provided. So here is, I'm gonna put in some fresh peeled lemon. Now, it doesn't have to be fresh peeled. You could have used a lemon yesterday or the day before and saved the peel. That's totally fine. As long as it hasn't like molded or anything, you're good. So now I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna pour in the mixture I just made with the water, the grapefruit seed extract, and the white vinegar. And I'm being really super careful because it would be incredibly embarrassing if I spilled this everywhere while I'm videoing. So I'm gonna be super, super. Ah, I spilled a little bit. I'm so embarrassed. Okay, there we go. So, in my spray bottle, I'm just gonna get my little hand towel here because I did spill just a teeny tiny little bit. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to let this sit and ferment for three weeks. And what I mean by ferment, we're gonna use that vinegar to ferment the, or, uh, the lemon peel because now I personally don't mind the smell of vinegar so much, but when you're cleaning a bunch of surfaces, that smell can be overwhelming and we'd much rather have um, something that smells really good in our homes, right? Uh, that's where the fragrances come in on the um, household cleaners that you typically use, right? Because they know you want your house to smell good. Well, this is gonna make your house smell amazing. Uh, you can also add some rosemary to this. Just take a, a little twig of rosemary and put it in here and let everything ferment together for three weeks. Um, yeah, so that's really, how you make it. And now you can just use this once it ferments, of course. Uh, I mean, it's totally fine the way it is, but you're not gonna get the, the, the really nice lemon scent um, unless you let it ferment for a while. So totally fine as is, let it ferment for three weeks so you can make a large batch and just pour some off as needed. I actually wouldn't recommend doing that because the lemon peels um, may go bad before you use it depending on how large of a batch you make but you know make a few and let them make one a week or however often you think you would use this much cleaner and and you will always have one one ready so that's basically how we are making this particular uh, recipe for the pet safe non-toxic all-purpose homemade cleaner again i do have another recipe um, for another all-purpose non-toxic pet safe household cleaner i did put a link in the description below it is one that you do not have to ferment for three weeks you can go ahead and use it right away so um you can use both i use both I'm not gonna lie to you, I use both. Especially if I run out of this and I don't have any more made, I'm gonna use the other one because I can make it and use it right away. But anyway, that is the recipe. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, don't forget to check the description for all the links that I mentioned, the other video, um, on the other pet safe, non-toxic, all-purpose cleaner video, the um, grapefruit seed extract where you can get that. And yeah. Comment, let me know what you think of this particular DIY recipe. And let me know if you like these kinds of videos because I love doing these kinds of videos. And if you let me know that you like them too, I'll do more of them. So go ahead and post in the comments and let me know what you think about this video. If you learned something, if you want me to make more videos like this, post it in the comments below. I really wanna know what you think. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, Another link that's in the description is to my seven steps, seven miracle steps book. Go ahead and grab your copy. It's all about raising your dog and training your dog. And it's the seven miracle steps to training your dog. So go ahead and grab your copy. The description is in, or the link is in the description. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you guys in the next video. I almost forgot. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Click the button right now. Click subscribe. I do all kinds of videos on dog training, dog behavior, enrichment, and nutrition. And of course, 
how to keep your pets safe, just like in this video. If you like any of that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and then click the bell to get notified, let YouTube notify you every time I post a new video. Thanks again for being here, for watching this video. I appreciate each and every one of you supporting my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.